Hello everyone, my family, my friends, and my esteemed colleagues. Today, our reprogramming is continuing by learning about our health enemy number one, which is the biblical forbidden fruit, which is what I call dietary glucose. It's a glucose that comes to our body through our diet. Now the only way glucose can come into our diet is we eat our food, especially not our food, our vegetables and fruits cooked or processed. Why cooked? Because glucose is starch which is food for plants and it is shielded from animals by a coating of cellulose. So since we cannot, up, uh, since we cannot digest cellulose, uh, we cannot get in touch with it, and neither can any animal, um, excluding herbivores, but they do not eat starches, they only eat greenery and they ferment it and then they need to eat a lot of it to create enough fatty bacteria, which then becomes their food through the fermentation process. So now, glucose, as I explained, the only way it can come into our body is that, that affects us negatively is when it's taken out of the protective coating, uh, out of the cellulose, and this is done most commonly by bursting the cellulose through heat. Corn you cannot digest. You expose it to heat, pop, you get popcorn. Well, it becomes white. The white is a glucose when the uh, cellulose membrane, the shell, exploded and broke up. Same as when you cook potatoes, when you cook rice, when you cook beans, you always break down the cellulose and you get into starch. Now, what happens? Starch actually is one of the root causes well, dehydration on a cellular level, lack of minerals and water, and on the other side is cellular reprogramming. And cellular reprogramming, because environment has changed, is happening under the influence of starch, not sugars. Fructose has nothing to do with it. It is the starch. And this is why nobody really talks about it. It's always look at this way. Okay, before we we're fats. Now we know it's not a fat problem. Oh, it's sugar problem. Okay, sugar, wheat sugar, fructose. Let's look here. Fructose, fructose. It turns, liver turns it into um, uh, fats and at the same time produces uric acid. So this is the problem. Well, guess what? Same happens if the liver processes glucose. It turns it into fat and in uric acid and our plates are loaded with it so if you are vegetarian and if you are fat you are fat because you ate a lot of glucose glucose is sugar but since your body cannot deposit it as a sugar liver turns it into fat and deposits it as a fat and at the same time produces uric acid which you cannot cleanse if you are low on sugar on, on salts and water because you don't have enough plasma so it starts crystallizing in your kidneys, it acidifies you, so it has to be neutralized, there goes buffers, and here we go with problems which are caused by our consumption of glucose. It is blood circulation, uric acid, of course, kidney stones, gallstones, rheumatism, then it triggers resistance to insulin. So here comes your diabetes. Diabetes is, 90% of it is resistance. Even at diabetes one, it's resistance to insulin or more on higher level. Since the energy becomes manipulated in your body now by presence or not presence of availability of glucose, now you have starvation moments as you have uh, plentiful moments. Brain 
does not like these things because it uses a lot of energy. And since glucose you cannot deposit and take when you need it, if you are not eating every two hours, the brain is always in starvation mode. Yeah, you eat, 10 minutes later, sugar comes in, boom, energy is there. Half hour later, energy is diminishing and then until you eat next time, you bring next, next time you bring carbohydrates, brain is in starvation. First making you sleepy and then if you force it to work, work it becomes, in, it goes in a stress mode and you become irritable just to tap on glycogen. Now, a huge amount of what we call diseases are nothing more than symptoms created by glucose. Let's look at it. For example, when glucose enters the blood, well first, there, it cannot enter a lot of it if we are eating correctly. So, because there is not enough transporter, you need glute protein. But if you start producing insulin, at the same time you start producing more glute protein. So every day, if glucose becomes part of your diet, every day you are going to be producing insulin and you will be producing glute. So your glute levels are rising. What does that mean? That your sugar absorption rises as well. So you will start absorbing more and more sugar. Now you will absorb more than cells can use to make energy and the level of sugar in the blood will be increasing which liver tries to deal with by turning them into fat and deposit them as a fat. While doing that it produces uric acid as well and you are being becoming acidic. If that continues and you cannot flush it out, well, what happens is that, again, amount of absorbed sugar, glucose, glucose, remember glucose, not the white little thing on a table that you use as a sweetener that's full of fructose. That's not such a problem as your average potato, tomato, uh, well, tomato, potato, uh, boiled carrots, for example, cooked carrots, or rice um, grains like, uh, you know, bread, doesn't matter, whole wheat, it's even worse than, than white bread. Why? Because it's basically white flour with a little bit of dry fiber put in, like this makes any difference. Only for a brain, so it can manifest, oh, a little relief because you told the brain that this is good for you, but there is absolutely no difference there. So, you are daily, as you are eating glucose, you are daily increasing your sugar absorption and because you are increasing daily amount of glute protein, the transporter. So, now since a lot of glucose is coming in, liver has to produce, turn it into fat, so liver produces more fat that it can actually put back into circulation and into adipose tissue, and liver is becoming fat. So fatty liver is a problem of you eating carbohydrates and not you eating eggs, which doctors always confused. Eggs eating eggs and pork has nothing to do with your fatty liver. It is all your sugar, call, pardon me, dietary glucose absorption. People always say, well, I'm not eating much sugar. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, badly eating bread or, eat, or having big pasta dish. Pure, pure dietary glucose. Fructose does not do any of these things. It will not create production of insulin. It doesn't increase its absorption of sugars. So you can eat as many fruits as you want as long as you don't eat dietary glucose. Again, boiled, cooked, heated vegetables and fruits, especially the starchy ones. Now, another thing is as glucose is coming into the cells, now the cells have to manipulate it. 
and they need enzymes for this, which usually they don't need because they do not use glucose as a fuel. We are being told this in a school because, in, again, in the schools we are being told, you look at this way, don't look here. And we always focus where we are being told. Even though in the small letters is mentioned, yeah, but the Krebs cycle also can be done on fat. Well, we have deposits of fat, we don't have deposits of sugar. So if we are naturally accumulating fat, it's our deposit of energy. Why would be depositing, why would, be, why would we be depositing energy that we should not be using? This is utter nonsense, but nobody thinks about it. We just take everything for granted. Oh, we are told this by authority, so it is so. Authority is the bigger, biggest liar there is. Don't trust anything authority ever tells you. So, here we go. As the enzyme, which is uh, glycosate hydrohydrolase, has to be produced to manipulate the sugar now, uh, the gene that activates cell to produce this particular uh, enzyme normally in normal conditions when it's vibrating properly it is vibrating on different level and stimulates cell to produce another protein called GCMF which is immune marker so when we are always surprised that animals in the nature are so res resilient to infections of course because everything gets marked that has to be destroyed they don't have cancer it gets destroyed so what happens well more glucose we allow in our body our cells start using it they are forced to use it so they start decomposing this uh, engaging mitochondria because they produce energy very quickly uh, using a sugar not that uh, glucose has a, a lot of calories more than fat it has less than half of the calories of fat but produces energy anaerobically because the molecule of sugar has its own oxygen so it doesn't need oxygen from outside so the cell one when it starts working on carbohydrate producing energy produces carbon dioxide which level of carbon dioxide rises and becomes higher than um, than than basic pressure of oxygen that comes in and it cannot be pushed out cannot be changed so the cell is becoming acidic and uh, we know cancer cells are anaerobic because and what they um, use is basically glucose to run themselves uh, they are actually cleansing station that um, eliminates a lot of sugar from the blood circulation of the organ which cancer is trying to protect so as you increase dependence on glucose you are producing a lot of nagalas this enzyme to be able to manipulate it you your production of GCMF basically stops so now you have hung, um, fungus and, and bacteria and virus living in your body not being challenged microfag just goes by hi buddy how are you doing because it's not marked does not know has to destroy it which of course negatively affects your whole body now uh, infections become easily uh, progress easily because there is no body's response to it um, also as the amount of glucose being absorbed rises the amount of mitochondria that is active is diminishing so from 2000 you may go to 500 or less mitochondria this is enough for this explosive production of sugar when you start eating and uh, because the cells are acidic they cannot hold the charge so even if you don't do nothing they discharge and faster rate 
and you are becoming tired, sleepy, even if you don't do nothing. And your cells require energy, so you know they, they ask for more energy. And body sense strictly is right because it does not have stores of of sugar. Do not confuse do not confuse glycogen because you know I already mentioned before glycogen is produced by cells that use it only in emergency cases as a booster fuel. So glycogen you only have in your muscles and in your brain. A uh, little bit in brain, more in the muscles, and some in the liver, and liver is the only donator. So glycogen in, in a muscle can only be used by the, this muscle cell. It cannot push the glycogen out. Same is with the brain. Only liver cell can push it out, and there is no, definitely not enough to make you work on it. You become hypoglycemic if you try to work on this very quickly. And this is why people, glucoholics, which are 99% of population, if they don't eat within three, four hours, they become irritable and go in hypoglycemia. They have to eat because starvation puts cells in a stress mode just to be able to tap in glycogen. So there are plenty neurological problems coming along with it. As the circulation is being affected, every cell in your body, because insulin, first blood vessels, uh, the cells that form them are being constantly irritated by insulin. So they want to thicken their membranes, so they ask for more cholesterol. So your body produces more cholesterol, even either from sugar, glucose that you eat in the liver, or if you have eaten some meat and fat, then before it being pushed into the blood from your intestines, the intestine will create cholesterol just to fulfill the demand of, the, of your cells. Higher cholesterol is just signal that you have something happening in a body that is not normal and your cells require more cholesterol. Now when they start thickening their membranes so they, they uh, avoid this irritation of insulin, well now you need more insulin to, to irritate them and this is why your production of insulin is increasing and increasing until one day you cannot produce more to irritate enough the thick walled cell to absorb insulin and you go from diabetes 2 into diabetes 1. Uh, on the other side this increased thickness of the membranes of the cell make the whole tissue thicker, less flexible. And here you go, your blood vessels cannot anymore dilate properly and here comes increased blood pressure. So problems from one thing, you have variety of problems happening from the same source. Uh, we always, we are being told that, I, you have diabetes, you have to be careful because this will make your blood pressure, uh, your circulation will be de de deteriorating. Well, it's not because now you are showing higher levels of sugar. It started even with a low level of sugar. It started when you start eating glu dietary glucose. It's present. Even before you show any sign of disease, already you are undermining your health on this level, but you just don't know it until a symptom shows up. And when your sugar level starts uh, increasing because your liver cannot uh, fast enough transform it into fat, now you, your sugar goes above the calibration point, you start urinating it. And to eliminate it, you need more water, so it starts dehydrating you. And many people start losing weight, they drink a lot of water, they start losing weight because body is busy cleansing. Now, all this can be avoided simply. Stop eating this garbage. 
But how can we do it when even in Bible it says that uh, bread, you know, Jesus made bread, it's good for us. Well, this notion came before Jesus, 6,000 years ago. It came with Anunnaki, it came with fallen angels. And um, you have description of this on old Sumerian tablets. Even, you know, shown that gods that from heaven came showed us how to plant weed and how to prepare food from it, how to eat it. Before we are all nomads, just moving along, following the animals. And everybody who says, oh, we used to be uh, fruit eaters or plant eaters before, this is utter nonsense. There is absolutely n no, no way where this information can come from, except somebody invented it and now you have a million parents repeating it. So, it's nonsense, nonsensical. Sugar, glucose, dietary glucose, starch, because it reprograms your cells in this matter that basically it forces you to depend on glucose because it has taken many mitochondria out of action. So when sugar is not coming, when glucose is not coming, it cannot produce enough energy from fat. And you become hungry. And you become not only hungry, but you lose power. So you become tired, hungry and tired, debilitated. We should never be in a situation of being unable to hunt because we are hungry. This is not normal state, of course, because again, we are running on the wrong fuel. It's, you know, what creation is this? Let's just imagine you are this mechanic and you invent two stroke engine and uh, you have a gasoline to give you the energy and then you have oil that you mix with gasoline to lubricate the cylinders so it can work properly. And now you decide to make a huge five gallon tank for oil and one ounce tank for fuel. Does that make any sense? Well, this is when you compare glycogen and fat deposits in a human body. How can body like this work? Just think about it. Think about it. You don't have to be any expert. Just listen to this video a few times because once when we are programmed the wrong way, we just reject things. And then somebody says, oh, vegetables are great and we should be on vegetables, we should be juicing. Yeah, you can juice when you are fat because you have enough energy in your body so you stop eating dietary glucose because if it's raw, it not, doesn't affect you. So your cells start reprogramming. The juice more or less just brings you some water, but you are living on your fat. So you start losing the weight. You start feeling better. You're not being poisoned with glucose anymore. Everything starts functioning well. And you say, wow, vegetables, juicing, this is great. Yeah, but once when you lose all this fat, where your energy comes from? There is zero energy in juice. Unless it's, again, coming from a cooked soup or some cooked concoction. If it's raw, there is no energy in there. There is no energy in raw vegetables. zippity do nothing. There is no energy in fruits little bit of sugar, fructose that is laced with, does not even make it to run the digestion. Just makes you hungrier. These are simple facts about glucose that nobody can dispute. I mean, there are letters, there, there, it, this is even in the books, but nobody looks at it this way. Because we are being told, don't look here, look over there. Fructose, you know, you eat fruits, 
Ah, the corn syrup. Yeah, this uh, it's 50% fructose, but 50% dietary glucose. And once when your absorption is high, when you have a lot of glute, you will start absorbing a lot of fructose as well. So now even fruits are toxic to you because now all this fructose, same like glucose, are worse on one way because your cells will not take it. So uh, everything is just burden to a liver that has to turn it into fat and at this time produces also uric acid. But the same thing is happening with glucose. So it's not problem only fruct of fructose. Or the only difference is if you do not have dietary glucose and you just eat fruits, you are never ever going to become diabetic because you will never have to be producing insulin, you will never irritate your cells, you will never increase the number of glute and increase absorption of sugars. All that will happen is if you have too much fructose, a little bit get absorbed and the rest goes into intestines in colon ferments, produces alcohol, gas, gives you diarrhea and you get rid of it. And this is what is happening here in Amazonia with monkeys because mango became very popular so people are planting mango everywhere and monkeys here are not used to mango and they like it so when it's mango season they start eating mango and they all come up with shits so people say oh they are getting sick well they are getting sick yeah well they eat too much mango so now they have diarrhea same thing if you are constipated what is natural remedy prune juice prunes dry fruits because they are loaded with fructose so some of it will not get digested, it goes into the colon, it ferments, creates alcohol, it inflames intestines so this way it doesn't absorb water, more water stays in the colon, feces get softer. There is no fiber that has anything to do with your stool, with the quality of the stool. It's all about water which I'm going to address some other time. So here we go, the forbidden fruit, glucose. And whoever pride himself, oh, I'm long-term vegetarian, I just eat, live on vegetables. Well, you are living on glucose. Sooner or later, it is going to hit you because vegetables are toxic because they protect themselves from being eaten since they cannot run. They protect themselves with proteins, lectins glute, the other stuff. Whatever is medicinal is toxic and plants are full of medicinal properties, more or less. Okay, this is a food for thought. This is a part of the reprogramming, learning the truth. Let this enter your brain so your brain can calculate, can weigh things around, Without information, it can do nothing. It will just keep rolling in a circle, repeating the old same things. Until next time, it was great talking to you guys. Bye-bye.